Dear students, I happily invite you to the massive open online course on population studies. We all know that India is the second most populated country in the world. When we look into the history of population growth, the population of the world grew by 50 percent from 1900 to 1950, whereas it increased by 200 percent over the next 50 years to reach 6 billion just before the turn of 21st century. The United Nations predicts even with the decline in the fertility and slow rate of population growth, the global population may reach 9 billion in 2050. These bad demographic facts reveal the progress of humankind during the 20th century. The world's inhabitants face environmental and other related challenges because of these changes in the population size. The population growth or explosion is creating pressure to the social structure in the aspects like food, water, employment, income security, distribution of the resources. Hence, it cannot be denied that the population is having a significant role to play in the development of the nation in the context like the resource availability and the distribution of the resources. Actually, what is population? In the simple sense, population can be defined as a group of species belonging to the same category lives in the same geographical area at the same time. Studying the population in the scientific manner is called as population studies or demography. Subject of demography or the population dynamics is important as it has a direct impact on the society. John Grant is deemed by many to be the founder of demography. He was an English man who although lacked any higher education and untrained in the sciences or mathematics published in 1662 the first known quantitative analysis of human population and his work is called natural and political observations made upon the bills of mortality. Even though this happened a long back, later in 1960 to 1970, the discovery of global population problem was probably considered as the real heyday for demography. History of demography or population studies was closely bounded with the discipline of sociology. It is seen as the specific branch in sociology which studies the population as demography or population studies. Demography is a social sciences that studies the size, composition and distribution of the human population of a specific given area at a point of time. Its scope includes the changes that happen in the population size and composition and the components which induced it. Usually the population is determined by the components like fertility, mortality and migration. Population studies examine the size and composition of the population as well as the movement of the people from one locale to another. Demographers also analyze the effects of population growth and its control. Several demographic variables play a central role in the study of human populations, especially fertility and fecundity, mortality and life expectancy and migration. In this course, the emergence of the discipline was historically traced and its nature, scope and importance are deliberated. The sources of population data like census, vital statistics, sample surveys are explained. The course covers the explanation on population structure and composition. Population structure means makeup or composition of the population. The composition of the population is basically viewed in terms of age and sex. Looking at the population structure of a place shows how the population is divided up between male and female of different age groups. Population structure is usually shown using a population pyramid. Age and sex composition will provide the status of the country 
whether it is young or old, male outnumber the female or other way round. The sex ratio that is calculated in the sex composition is one of the important indicators of human development index. The knowledge on the composition of the population is vital to plan for the development of the nation. Theoretical base is the strength of any discipline. There are several thoughts and theories for population studies too. One of the most influential theories in population studies is Malthusian theory. Malthus, an Englishman, proposes the principle that human population grow exponentially that is doubling with each cycle while production grows at an arithmetic rate that is by the repeated addition of a uniform increment in each uniform interval of time. There are other economic theories of population, sociological perspectives of population and the demographic de transition theory. The demographic transition theory is a generalized description of the changing pattern of mortality, fertility and growth rates as societies move from one demographic regime to another. The term was coined first by Frank Nordstein, an American demographer in the mid 20th century and explained in different ways by different demographers in the later period. The course throws lights on all these theories. The main components of population are fertility, mortality and migration. These components determine the size of the population as well as the structure. In terms of population, fertility is usually expressed using the alternative methods of birth rate either crude or standardized for age and sex rather than treating it as an individual factor. The birth rates vary nation to nation and it is influenced by the fertility rates. Mortality is viewing death as a component of population change. Migration is the movement of people across any specified boundary for the purpose of establishing a new or semi-permanent residence. Population policy, policies related to population were framed by each nation in order to plan for the living of its people. The policy on population is needed to arrange for the future of the nation in terms of resource generation and resource distribution. Population education, an emerging field of this discipline and the impact of population growth on migration pattern, people's economic status, employability are also discussed to give an overall picture to the students in terms of population studies. As we all know, any course will have assessment to know whether you understand the course properly or not. The course will have assessment at the end of the course which comprises of 40 percent for online assessment and 60 percent for the term examination which will be conducted at the end of the course. Thank you students.